That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. For today's Daily Dose of Stupid, this one actually comes from Macon County. A mom there said that her school encouraging her daughter to dress up as a Native American as part of a Thanksgiving celebration was racist. Now, keep in mind, if you were just asking, even if you didn't say Native American specifically, just asking children to dress up as the people at the original Thanksgiving meal would have necessarily meant you either had to dress like a pilgrim or a Native American. There would be no other options. Like, you can't just show up looking like you're from, I don't know, Jersey Shore or wearing camo or something like that, because if you were to dress like them, the period clothing would be that. I also noticed that, I don't know if the kids were encouraged to dress up like pilgrims either, but pretty sure all the pilgrims were white, so if there's a racial aspect of one, I don't know why there wouldn't be a racial aspect of the other. But anyway, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself here. This is a report from AL.com. April Arthurs, whose five-year-old son attends Central School, is a member of the Mohawk tribe. After leaving, or sorry, after learning of a planned powwow for kindergartners, Arthurs wrote a letter to the principal saying, in part, quote, I wish to state very clearly, dressing up as a stereotype of a culture is racist, even if it's children, even if it's just for fun, even if no one has spoken up before now, even if this has been going on for decades. You know, I get that the reason that you come to this show is because I'm well-versed in debate and I know how to break down arguments. Now, watch me, because this is a very easy argument to break. It is so easy, in fact. I can break it with literally a single word. Why? So often, when we get in debates like this, people make the mistake of immediately defending their position. This one, you don't have to defend it at all. Force them to defend it. Because she's making the statement that you just heard me read, uh, that children dressing up as a stereotype of a culture is automatically racist. No matter how long they've been doing it, how, that's all you have to ask. Why? Explain to me why it's racist. How are children dressing up like a cultural stereotype? How is it racist? Why is it racist? See, that's the problem. If you ask them to dig deeper, they can't explain it. Because everything that this woman says, all the quotes, uh, looking through the letter that she sent in, everything assumes that it is racist, but never actually explains why it is racist. And sometimes the easiest way to break an argument is just ask them to clarify their own position. Because I got to tell you, a lot of the times, not every time, but a lot of the times, they can't do it. And I would be willing to bet, and I don't know, maybe this, this woman actually would be able to do this if presented the opportunity. But a lot of times people make the mistake of just assuming that they have a point or accepting the fact, uh, or at the very least, accepting the premise that they put down there and go into defense mode. Sometimes it's smarter to just say, well, can you explain to me why it's that way? Because usually they will be unable to do that. A good example here, Vikings are a racial stereotype. They're from Scandinavian countries. People dress up as them all the time in different operas. They do so at, at Vikings football games with Minnesota. This is a common thing. People walk, uh, walk around wearing Viking helmets. That's a cultural stereotype. It's, not, it, it's actually tied to a specific race. Why is that not racist? Knights. Knights exclusively happened in Europe. Knights had a racial identity because they were all from that sort of Western European tradition. In fact, my family, we, uh, on my father's side, are the descendant of a clan of knights. I don't complain when somebody dresses up as a knight. That's a cultural stereotype. I wouldn't even care if a, you know, Hispanic guy or a black guy dressed up as a knight. Doesn't bother me. In fact, and this is another thing that's funny, it wasn't very popular, but there's even a movie that I'm familiar with called The Black Knight, where it's a, a guy from modern America, I think Philadelphia, goes back in time, and he's in the Middle Ages, and he's a black guy as a knight. Well, the reason that's funny is because there is a racial identity tied to knights. They are of a specific race, but in this particular case, there was a black guy that was dressed up as a knight, which is fine. Didn't offend me. 
I don't care if they do that. See, this assumption that any time you dress as a cultural stereotype that that's racist, no, it's not. That's absurd. And the left only does that when it's a race that is not white. That's the only way that you ever hear anything about that, saying it's culturally insensitive or something like that. They always do that. And this happens every Thanksgiving. This one just happened to be in our home state, and that's the reason I wanted to highlight it a little bit. But I don't care if another race dresses as a Viking or a knight. Pirates, not so much, because they're pirates of all different races, but there's a lot of different stereotypes that are associated with being white. It doesn't bother me if they do it. And, and let's also keep in mind that I'm at least 132nd Native American, probably not as much as this person. But in the intersectionality game, I don't think that it matters one way or the other. The amount of, you know, Native American or, or any kind of racial demographic or breakdown that you can be doesn't weigh or outweigh the strength of my argument. Now, if there were people that were specifically getting around to mock a race, that would be different, and this is where her next quote comes in. Traditional headdresses, the ones everyone thinks about, you know, the, the big feathers and everything, uh, the ones that everyone thinks about with the big feathers, that's an incredibly sacred item to very specific tribes. There's a prayer in every stitch, there's a meaning in every bead and feather. To make a mock-up of it is yucky. <laughs> First of all, Whoa, step back now. <laughs> Look at the the rhetorical genius there. Well, I didn't know it was yucky. I guess I should stay away from it. Uh, uh, the word choice some people use here. But here's the thing. It's totally wrong to mock it. I, I agree. If you're putting on the dress of a Native American to mock it and to make fun of a person's race, that would be wrong. Yeah, I totally understand that. But we were just using knights, for example. Knights had a religious draw to them, especially uh, paladins. That's the reason that European knights typically have crosses adorning their armor. Still doesn't bother me if somebody dresses up at it. If they're doing so to make fun of it, okay, maybe then it does offend me a little bit, but I'm not offended by the fact that they dressed as a cultural stereotype. I'm offended by them mocking the religion underlying it. See, that's a completely different argument. And by the way, sometimes I don't even mind that. I mean, uh, look at some of Mel Brooks' work on that. It's, it's hilarious. But if you're putting on uh, some kind of particular dress to, to mock somebody, I can see how that would be wrong. But even then, the act of dressing like them is not what's being called into question here. It's the mocking. It's the intent. And that's what really makes the difference here. If it's a tribute, or if it's like in this particular case, to learn about a culture, that's not degrading. And another thing that's funny about this is she's talking about the stereotypical big feather headdresses and that kind of thing. Well, that was typically the Plains Indians. They weren't even Indians that lived around here. See, what we think of as the stereotypical Native American, because the Plains Indians and their culture lived on longer, you know, the teepees and riding around on horses and bows and arrows... That was mostly them, and because those tribes survived longer, we got more of that, and we kind of started to think that all people, uh, all Native Americans lived like that, when the truth is that's not the case for the vast majority of the Americans that were inhabiting the East. And so because of that, it's funny that she seems to bring that up without even acknowledging that that's not even how the Indians would have looked at least in this area of the country in, in Alabama. So if, but, but here's the thing, and this is the final word on this that I, I think is appropriate. If you don't want your kid to participate, that's fine. I don't think that you should be forced to. I don't think that you should say, no, 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 you're going to dress like an Indian and you're going to like it. No, I think the, pre, the parental authority here is ultimate. And even if I completely disagree with her ideas, even if I think she's dead wrong on this, she has a right to raise her kid the way that she wants to. Even if I think that she's wrong. But don't ruin it for everybody else. If they want to raise their kids like that, if they think that this is something that is good and appropriate and culturally beneficial for them to dress like Native Americans and learn about their culture and learn what they would have lived like, then don't ruin it for them. If you don't want your kid to do it, that's fine. 
but don't assume that you know best and you ought to be raising everybody else's kids. See, I want to afford you the liberty to raise your child the way that you want to, and if you think this is a bad idea or you think that this is not something that would help them in that, not participating. I'm fine with that. But please extend that same courtesy to other parents. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.